bro. Spider-Man didn't get one reward. Spider-Man didn't get not one award. Seven, seven, seven nominations. We get zero. Why the hell didn't Spider-Man 2 win a single game award? Spider-Man 2 won zero awards at the game awards this year. It was nominated for seven. Not a single award. Spider-Man 2 won. There's no way. You and I are not so different. I'm not like you. You lost seven times? Yeah. Please, Fred, don't become one of them. Don't become another Geeks and Gamers. Don't become another quartering. Don't go down this road of calling everything you see woke. Everything is current day. Everything is pronouns. Everything is gender ambiguity. And you have to point it all out. Now calm down. You don't have to worry because for starters, I'm not anything like those guys. I can actually edit, and second off, unlike them, I also take time to call out both sides. Unfortunately, I can't name you a single right-wing company that has taken a foothold of the entire gaming industry and has enough power to influence and race swap characters. I'm not doing this for no reason. Like the other 80% of the world, you show enough of it on screen eventually will catch on. Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. We know what you're trying to do, Jeff. Always aiming for the most liberal of sponsors. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Are we supposed to pretend like the people Jeff hangs out with backstage aren't the type of folks that support story time with drag queens? You know how many he, she, they, thems Jeff Keighley associates with? So excuse me if I don't have a single bit of respect for any jackass Jeff brought out on stage. Excuse me if I don't support any single one of Jeff's sponsorships or advertisers, which is what his whole entire award show is. One giant ad for the entire video game industry. Why do you think he only has to host the show once a year? He only needs one paycheck and he's getting paid really good. But the thing that continues to surprise me is how he doesn't have to deliver a good show to get that paycheck. So even if you were to take all the woke propaganda out of here, you're still left with far more ad placements than actual awards being handed out and all of the winners getting rushed off stage because there was actually a screen prompt in the middle of the audience telling them to hurry up with a countdown timer. That's how much your contributions to the gaming industry matter. Uh, okay, clock's ticking. Yes, 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 yes. You wrote one of the best games in the last decade. But can you give a, a 10 second long speech because we got this Starfield ad we got paid to roll, please? Kindly hurry up. At one point, Jeff looked ready to push them off the stage. And yes, of course, unfortunately, we did not have Matan Evan here to save the night, like last year. I thought to myself, mm, maybe he's one of the guys hiding in the Brotherhood armor, and any minute now, he's gonna take off his helmet and scare everyone. But no, there, there was no surprises. Instead, we were directed to Todd Howard, who was hiding somewhere in the crowd, hanging his head in shame, knowing that his game will get absolutely no awards deservingly. So, uh, good credit to the guy in the suit. Thank you for pointing out Todd Howard for us in the audience. He's very tiny, and by the looks of it, I think he may have been sitting on a booster seat. Other notable faces was Reggie, Cuck Miller, that fat f <laughs> Jesse Cox, the king of soy, Neil Drunkman, the man who I'm not sure I should really be giving that much praise to anymore, Kojima, Matthew goddamn McConaughey, uh, Gonzo? For, for some reason, you know, they brought out the Muppets for one of the unfunniest segments. I mean, holy shit, I kid you not. They dedicated more time to Gonzo's unfunny segment, more time to Jordan Peele, that's right, Jordan Peele walked out on stage, than any single winner of any of the awards. That's how prestigious Jeff views these awards. He's only willing to give you 10 seconds to receive the award, while he hands Kojima 10 minutes to tell you absolutely nothing about anything. All while trying to hide an erection in his pants, since Jeff can't help himself when it comes to Kojima. He's enamored with them. It's absolutely wild because none of these criticisms of the Game Awards or Jeff Keighley are anything new. I'm pretty sure you've heard it before. And that's because, well, Angry Joe was right over 10 years ago when he was calling out Jeff. But back then, we were laughing at Joe, not realizing... 10 years later, we would finally understand what is wrong with Jeff and his stupid ass award show, which was more of a celebration of Jeff's rich ass friends than it was a celebration of video games. Another thing about this award show is it was long. I mean, it really dragged out. It was about a four hour long stream for me. 
It was so long I was ready to call it quits by the third hour. But like with all the other award shows before it, none of us are here to see pretentious titles handed out to pretentious people. We were all there for the world premieres and reveals. And let me tell you, they were all incredibly disappointing. Well, not all, we'll get into it. But I will say this, I think this may have been the most amount of reveals I have ever seen. And yet, nothing here looked inspiring. Nothing looked like it could distinguish itself from another title. All weeaboo games with the same goddamn art style. A plethora of indie darlings that everybody's going to forget. I support indie developers, I support indie games, but when you say world premiere, I'm expecting a goddamn world premiere. Not a trailer you could have dropped on YouTube or Twitter. Now this is where I have to give credit to Xbox, surprisingly, because None of us expected them to walk out with more awards than PlayStation, let alone walk out with just one award. The Xbox tax was lifted for a day and instead a tax was placed on Sony, whose first party titles didn't manage to capture a single award. That's right, Spider-Man 2 nominated seven times, lost all seven nominations. I get Starfield didn't walk away with an award and also lost its one nomination, but believe me, nothing hurts more than to lose seven times in a row versus losing once. I understand where all the frustration from PlayStation fanboys is coming from. The biggest thing Sony revealed to you was DLC for God of War Ragnarok, which already felt like DLC. Nobody expected Xbox to walk away with more Ws. That was probably the biggest surprise for me at this award show. I really thought Sony was gonna sweep up a bunch with Spider-Man 2, but thankfully for us, something even more woke came out the same year, Alan Wake 2, which robbed Spider-Man of more awards than even Baldur's Gate 3. You know, it's funny, a good chunk of Twitter got really pissed off at me, and a few comments in my last compilation video. People were telling me, oh, Fred, obviously you're gonna get all the angry ponies and splice them together. Well, show me the equivalent for the Xbox guys. Show me videos of Colt Eastwood, Crap Gamer, Dealer Gaming, Destin, or any major Xbox streamer. Show me clips of them having mental breakdowns, cause I looked for them. I'm sorry, I, I understand that you guys desperately want the salt to seem like it's even, but it's not. The ponies were significantly more outraged that Spider-Man 2 didn't win anything. Xbox fans meanwhile are pretty quiet about Starfield cause you know, deep down inside they know Starfield didn't deserve any nomination. While the PlayStation guys are crying that it didn't win, even though they didn't play Spider-Man 2. That's right. Okay, I've never, i never played the game. Oh shit. I've never played the game. But bro, Spider-Man didn't get one reward. Spider-Man didn't get not one award. Oh, everybody, would you look at who it is? It's the man that single-handedly started a riot in New York City trying to do a PS5 giveaway. You remember that? You remember how they nearly burnt down half of New York City because Kai was giving away a PS5? Just look at all those future doctors, lawyers, and bioengineers. Everybody here looks like they have such a bright future ahead of them. But doesn't this ever just make you wonder? Someone as mainstream as Kai speaking on the behalf of a video game he didn't even touch? You wonder how many people casting their votes, how many commenting and having arguments with others online are just like Kai. They only wanted Spider-Man to win out of brand loyalty. I don't even know how you can shamelessly admit this on camera so casually. But believe me, this doesn't bring in anywhere near as much shame as the next pony. Oh, well, I will suck a dick if Spider-Man don't win this. Well, I will suck a dick if Spider-Man don't win this. You know, it's uh, been a couple of days and I have yet to see you do what you promised you were going to do. Now get on those knees and let me go find Jim Ryan. You never mentioned who you were going to fluff up, so let me choose for you. I think Jim Ryan is perfect. Who better to pucker those lips up for than the man who screwed you over the hardest this year? I mean, just listen to that desperation. Listen to these folks. They are on the verge of breaking down. And some of them do. This is the corporate fanboyism that you always hear me talk about in my videos. You always think I'm exaggerating, guys. You always think, ah, it's even. The Xbox guys and PlayStation guys are just 
as retarded. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Not after this. This reminds me of that one clip in Menace to Society where the crackhead tells the dude he'll suck him off for some crack. It was absolutely insane. You had motherfuckers dressed as Spider-Man, repping their Spider-Man merch. You, you had one come out with their Spider-Man 2 PS5 collector's edition box. They legitimately thought Spider-Man was gonna take game of the year. I don't know how. Bad enough that at the beginning of the award show, we got a splash on screen of Sweet Baby Ink, the entity solely responsible for making Spider-Man's writing as mid as it was. But they don't care if the game is mid. Hell, they probably wouldn't care if it was bad. It's all about the optics. Hell, a good chunk of them didn't even have to play the game to consider it a game of the year contender. That's how outrageous it is. But not as outrageous as the Blade reveal, which uh, showed us nothing. So thank you for that one, Arcane. The only thing we know is that this thing exists and it's from Xbox Studios. So you know what that means. The ponies were lining up, waiting, crossing their fingers, hoping it would also come to PlayStation. Just look at their excitement. Yo! Let's go! Let's go! We're getting. Yes, and uh, after Dishonored, the lane, Wolverine. The of business was to make sure right, Marvel Xbox, bro. said, okay, let's All really right, challenge bro. them. That's let's present our widest. Mwah! Art! Pure art! Just listen to that entitlement! <laughs> oh my god! Ow! 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 Oh, so much pain from laughing! <laughs> These dudes all thought Blade was going to be on PlayStation! They thought they were gonna get Wolverine and Blade! PlayStation stay winning! And yet they don't even know! I said, yo, y'all don't even have a game that can compare to 10-year-old Uncharted 4. Got nothing. Nothing. Just look at this. He goes from hyped and excited to defensive all within a few minutes. The minute he found out it's an Xbox title, the narrative switches almost immediately. I'm telling you, these guys would reject cancer treatment if it came from Phil Spencer. The slow realization that they were just hyped for an Xbox title before realizing they can't do that is hilarious. Look, uh, I I'm not gonna pretend to be excited for a Blade game. I I when I heard the rumors were that it was going to be a superhero game being revealed at the award show, I, I wasn't hyped at all. I, I don't really care. As long as it's rated M and not afraid to show some gore, then my interest is non-existent. If Arcane does right by this title, it could very well help the Blade franchise be brought back into the main scene. Well, either way, uh, PlayStation said, we have Miles Morales with his deaf girlfriend. <laughs> Aren't you excited? And along comes Xbox to say, well, we got Blade and vampires and shit. And nobody can pretend like there was no hype. The ponies were losing their minds before realizing it's going to be for Xbox. So there very much is some hype there. Baldur's Gate 3 w w winning d d d game of the year over this if crazy. Uh, not really, no. What, what, what's crazy is how you got 29,000 likes on this post. The 29,000 mindless drones out there really just blindly agree with this? This is cinematic. We're, we're using cinematics to stack up against a game like Baldur's Gate 3. Jesus Christ, the ponies are an all-time low. Every year just gets worse for them. As each year passes by, less and less people are amused by overdrawn cinematics in their video games. The shift is happening. People want a focus back on gameplay. And that, my friend, is why Baldur's Gate 3 won. No amount of fancy cinematics designed to replicate a Marvel Disney film can match the depth or freedom that a game like Baldur's Gate 3 gives you. The way PlayStation fanboys act when they start to realize that they are not the only gaming demographic out there is hilarious. They really don't know anything outside of PlayStation. This is one of the highest selling and most successful games of the entire generation. On PC anyway. That's how short-sighted the ponies are. They don't realize elsewhere in the world more people are playing Baldur's Gate 3 than Spider-Man 2. Elsewhere, outside of Ponyland, 
the PC platform dominates the majority of the gaming industry. Spider-Man 2, even with all its insane marketing, could not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a game made by a double-A studio like Larian. Your world is much smaller than you think, ponies. For you, Spider-Man 2 may have seemed like the biggest game of the year, when in reality, you step outside the console world and you start to realize how small and insignificant your games really are. And Twitter made that evidently clear because this post was ratioed into oblivion. And the best part is that nobody in the comment section is impressed by Spider-Man 2. I love it. I love it! Thank God, the world is healing! Finally, people are taking notice that these are cinematic moments, not actual gameplay. Tapping triangle when the game tells you to in an on-rail segment is not the same as making world event life choices in something like BG3. One looks to take gameplay to new heights, the other looks to continue playing it as safe as it has for over a decade. Spider-Man 2 is merely a platter, while Baldur's Gate 3 is the full course meal. But thank you, ponies. Thank you for once again proving to the entire internet that PlayStation games are non-interactive movies with shallow gameplay. Thank you for continuing to prove to us that what we say is right. Spotted her man too, robbed. I'll probably like Baldur's Day 3 when I buy it. I'm a hate right now though. He's straight busted for real for real, no cap. Uh, you can tell that tweet was written by a brilliant mind. That tweet definitely came from the future inventor of space travel. Has anybody else here noticed how nobody agrees with the PlayStation dude saying Spider-Man deserved one award? Everybody's saying it didn't deserve anything. Reception for this game is not matching up with the Metacritic scores. Really makes you wonder, doesn't it? Spider- Spider-Man 2 got webbed. Spider-Man 2 was robbed by a point-and-click game? Absolutely robbed. Another victory for the white men. Robbed. This isn't fair. It's a great game and deserve an award. Baldur's Day 3 over Spider-Man 2 has to be the biggest joke of the year. Who actually played that game? I'd have never seen one clip of Baldur's Gate. How did it win? Can anyone tell me what Baldur's Gate does better than Spider-Man 2? Cause there's no way. I I'm sorry, you, you guys have to understand from my perspective. It is hard to believe this crowd exists. It is unimaginable to me that anyone in their right mind actually thinks Spider-Man 2 was the best game to come out this year. I know you don't actually think that. I know you're serving your allegiance to your corporate brand and your obsession with Spider-Man exceeds that of video games. But think realistically for one second, what did Spider-Man 2 do that has any of you claiming it was robbed? What did it do better in any of those categories than any other game? Nothing. It didn't have the best art direction. It didn't have the best soundtrack. Didn't have the best accessibility, wasn't the best game of the year, didn't have the best direction, wasn't the best action game. I don't know how hard you guys have to lie to yourselves. Absolutely hilarious. After spending part of the year bragging about how Baldur's Gate 3 is only on PlayStation 5, the game ultimately ended up being their demise. They were bragging about it like it was an exclusive. Now they're trying to downplay it like nobody knows what Baldur's Gate is. Isn't that hilarious? Somehow, nobody knows what Baldur's Gate 3 is when it's getting referenced on South Park. Okay, sure. I know it's hard for you to believe that this double-A game could outsell, outscore, and be talked about more than Spider-Man 2 that got plastered on buses, billboards, subway stations. But again, that's why it's very important to step outside of your console war bubble. You need to see reality. And reality is Spider-Man 2 is mid. And also just simply too woke. But I must admit this is the best reality check I've seen handed to a pony in a long ass time. They'll finally be able to afford some common sense. No, seriously, I, I thought Xbox would be the ones overrunning the timeline and I'd have no choice but to make some mid Xbox salt. But no, it was the ponies having meltdowns on camera, saying the award show is rigged yet again for the second time. I expected all of this from Xbox dudes because I knew Starfield wasn't going to win a goddamn thing. But I uh, know most of them are treating Starfield's embarrassing showing relatively well. Meanwhile, we got ponies out here saying they'll fluff someone up or crying about it 
not winning any awards, even though they didn't play it. This is wild. One thing's for certain, each and every single time I have expected the Xbox to come through with the salt, it's always the ponies who are a step ahead with the most embarrassing display any grown ass man could ever have. My cringe warnings go very underappreciated in the videos, don't they? I tell you all the time in my description, be warned, what you're gonna see is cringe. Anyways, while the meltdown on social media has been excellent, I can't say sitting through that award show was worth any of it. Be honest to yourselves, was getting the high off the ponies worth all that suffrage? Well, tell me in the comments. Anyways, with that being said, I've got a lot more to cover. So stay tuned, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Not if you so choose to, but because I said so. And that being said, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Free Congo sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs>